Hi, I'm Sarah, and welcome to the Ladies Tears Nuts podcast. It's been ages since I have recorded a video, and I've got loads of stuff to show you. So let's get started. Um, I think the last time I recorded was before Easter, um, though I had a wrist injury, so I wasn't knitting for a good month, three weeks of the time since then. Um, but, and there are some works in progress that I still have going, but I'm wearing something which has been started and completed since I last made a video. Um, this is the Helix Pullover. It's a finished object. I wove in all the ends the day before yesterday. Um, it's a test knit that I did by Jesse May and Designs. And it's based, I think she has a bunch of patterns using this sort of simple two-row lace motif. Um, I always get sucked in by the test knitting calls. My experiences knitting Jessie May's patterns have been hit or miss in the past. I made the diaphanous raglan, which was a huge success. I wear it all the time. I really love that jumper. I did the short ruffle sleeve and it's like in an olive green color. So that came out really, really nice. I made the the flutter top, flutter butt top, which was like a total disaster. It just had no shaping in it and didn't fit and looked bad and took forever. Um, and then I made the outline tank and that was kind of a big disaster as well. And I made two of the secret summer tank tops. Those were great when I was wearing them. And I think I also made the secret. So there was like a ribbed one and a non-ribbed one. And I made both of them. Um, so yeah, I've got a lot of experience knitting her patterns. And some of them have been great. And some of them have been sort of misses. I just... At this stage, sometimes I want more intricacy to a pattern. Um, but I was really into the way that this pattern looked in the test call. And so I applied and I got into the test knit, which was really exciting. Um, and also pretty cool because I feel like, I don't know, I haven't always given her patterns the biggest positive reviews. I guess she's probably too busy to look through all of the reviews for every test knitter. But I thought that that was neat. Um, anyway, so I finished the, he did I call it the Helix Pullover? It's called the Helix Pullover. And it was a really interesting experience knitting it. I will say, I love the finished object. Um, I think it's gorgeous. I'm wearing it over this, like, it's like a cropped square neck top. And I think that's quite a good thing for me to wear it over. Um, it's a bit too see-through for me to wear it with just a bra, but um, sometimes I, I find that like short sleeve shirts look kind of like weird under it. So I've been really liking wearing it over sort of a tank top or a cropped like thing with no sleeves. Um, and since I finished it, I have gotten quite a bit of wear out of it, but I've only woven the ends the day before yesterday. So before that, there was about a week where when I got home, I was putting on and just wearing it trailing ends. Um, so I made this with Camarose linen, which I have two balls extra of. I have them. Yeah, so here's my swatch. The pattern sort of <laughs> gives you very detailed instructions on how to make a swatch, which really makes you make a swatch. Um, I did not meet Gage. I was, I think I was getting like, for every eight stitches, I was getting nine. Um, and I really didn't want to go up in needle size because I thought that it would look bad. It's a 100% linen yarn, and I find that I like linen, but sometimes it can look kind of messy if I knit it at too loose a gauge. So I decided that I would just size up. And um, so size up to, because I wanted to make the 1X size for 
my bust measurement with the recommended amount of ease. My bust measurement is in the low 40s, like 41 or 42. Um, so I ended up making the 2x, which after my calculations of gauge, um, oh, and I didn't want to switch yarn because I'd already bought this yarn. So I wasn't gonna um, just not use it. And I don't have any other sport weight yarn. Um, so I made the 2x and I did quite a few modifications, but I'll tell you about the yarn first. So I, I have two extra balls. Um, it was on sale at a yarn online yarn shop. I think it might be being discontinued. And if it is being discontinued, that's a good thing. <laughs> it was just sort of a nightmare type of yarn to work with. First of all, sorry, there's a bird noise out the window. First of all, um, the color is quite different to how it appeared on the website. It looked like it would be much darker. Um, I like the color now that it's finished, but this is the color of old towels to me. <laughs> like that like really watery green, sort of pale. It is the color of old towels in my mind. Um, and it, it looked like it would be a much darker green on the website. Not much darker, but darker than this, more like a eucalyptus. Um, when I had, I was sort of well into this and I was worried that I would run out, so I bought another skein. And then I was worried that that wouldn't be enough, so I bought another skein of a different color. Um, it was a questionable decision to buy this brown skein, skein, they're balls, to buy this brown ball, but I was really worried that I wouldn't have enough. Um, and by that point, I had spent a lot of time on this jumper. It's a chain net um, yarn with 140 meters per 50 grams. Um, the thing about the chain net construction with linen is that since it has absolutely no elasticity, if you snag it, which I was doing a lot, it doesn't like, if you snag a little thread, sorry, that that train sounds horrible. really horrible. I hope you can't hear that. Um, I've got the window open because it's a hot day. And if you snag one of the little threads out of the chainette yarn, it doesn't work itself back in. It just stays snagged. Um, and that was happening quite a lot. So I have this jumper where if you look closely, and maybe I'll insert some footage, it already looks kind of bad, like snagged up because it was just getting quite snagged and I was knitting it. Um, and it was impossible to like work it back in to the fabric in the way that you might be able to with wool or with like a, like a acrylic sort of chainette type of yarn. I think a lot of the time you get acrylic chainette yarns or nylon and then the fiber is blown around. But that has more elasticity to the fiber. So I, didn't enjoy using this yarn, so if they discontinued it, I would think that that was maybe a good idea. Um, I so I have these two full skate full balls left. I've seen one pattern for like a little bag, like a lace, not lace, but sort of like a mesh effect. You knit lace to to do it. So I might make that with these, just to use them and have them not go to waste. Because it is, I think that the outcome feels really nice and it does look nice it's just a bit of a letdown when the piece takes so long to make and it kind of looks busted from the, the get-go um so yeah it was off to a bit of a rocky start <laughs> with this pattern unfortunately because of the yarn and my gauge issues it's a two row lace repeat a little bit fiddly but by the time i had finished the swatch it's memorized it was actually it's very simple um lace motif and it actually looks pretty cool on the other side as well um there it's sort of a ribbed texture so if you are using a yarn that has elasticity it will give a somewhat ribbed effect um, and probably block out very nicely but I knit linen for this project so 
I didn't really end up with that. Um, I'm a little bit curious to see how it changes in shape as I wear it because I know that linen, in my experience, does change quite a bit um, with wear. That's why I get the sleeves a little bit short because things sometimes grow. There's the tiniest bit of short row shaping on the back, which I'll show you. I hope you can see. Um, the lace pattern the lace pattern doesn't continue in that shaping. I think that it would be neat if it did, but it does look intentional. Um, I used, uh, I think that it's a four millimeter needle for the main body. And then I used a 2.25 for all of the ribbon. Yeah, the pattern comes out in a few days. I think that if you really like the look of it, then you will like, you will like it. You should make it. Um, and if you're not so hot on the look of it, don't make it. I don't know if that's very useful advice, but I really enjoyed how, I enjoy how it looks. I find, found the making process to be pretty lab laborious, um, just because I didn't really like the yarn I was using and linen it was quite tough on my hands, but I really like the end product. So all is well that ends well, I think. Um, I did quite heavy modifications to the sleeves. That's about the only area that I modified. Um, I, I knit the sleeve, the first sleeve three times. Not the whole thing, but I got to about elbow length three times. Initially, I picked up the number of stitches in the pattern recommended, and it was just really, really big. Like it was flapping around um, and it looked bad. So I, I wanted it to be a somewhat fitted sleeve. Like I would say that this has zero inches of positive ease, but also like it maybe has like a negative half inch of negative ease in the sleeves for me. Um, but the initial sleeve count was just huge. It was saying to pick up three of every four stitches. Um, so then I, unraveled that and I did it again and I picked up like every other I would pick up three out of every four and then I would pick up one of every two and then I'd pick up three out of every four and I did that and I knit that sleeve down to the elbow and that was also very very large um so then I ripped it out and I picked up other than the underarm stitches and the stitches at the join on the back where the back meets the front I did one in every two stitches. Now, this really pulled in my armhole, which was huge when I was working on it, as was the neckline, um, which is part of the reason why I think that the shape of the garment's gonna change a bit as I wear it. Um, so it really pulled in the armhole, and it, I think that it looks really nice. Um, it sort of emphasizes the drop shoulder a little bit more. Um, and I did decreasing, I think, every sixth row, just up until I got to a point where it felt right to stop decreasing with the lace pattern. And then um, I just knit straight until I got to the sleeve. Um, I just did a regular inside out bind off um, everywhere. I think that I'm gonna wear this quite a bit. It's quite light, but since it has holes, if you're in the wind, the wind kind of swishes through the holes. So it kind of cools you down in a way that is a bit unexpected. I sort of, I'm still seeing how, how what it's like to wear this sort of jumper. Cause I knew that I wanted it to be summery. So I didn't want to make it out of wool. Um, but I haven't made a non-tank top item out of linen before, so we'll see how it goes. Um, wearing it. I like the color more now. I wouldn't say no to dyeing it in the future if that felt right, um, but I'm not in any rush to do that. It took me about six weeks of like really steady knitting. It's sport weight, but it is lace, and this yarn was very slow for me. Um, so, 
I think it's released in the next few days. You might see me in the pattern testers. I used exactly seven balls of yarn, um, although I heavily modified the sleeves and I knit at a different gauge. So I don't know how helpful that information would really be for another person knitting it. I used just over a thousand meters to make this. Yeah, and I really like it. It goes with pretty much everything. At least I think it does. Apologies if I'm a bit low energy. It's 9 p.m. Uh, it's still beautiful and light outside. I live in Edinburgh, and that's just the wonderful thing about this time of year. But I've had a pretty long day working on essays for my second term of uni. Um, so yeah, I really wanted to record this, but I'm feeling like I'm a little bit like slower of thought than I normally am. So hopefully you don't mind. Now, this is a work in progress that might be familiar to returning viewers. Uh, it's the Woven Check Sock by Stephen West um, as part of the series that I'm doing where I knit all of the Stephen West 2023 year of socks. And this sock has stolen my sock mojo. I, I don't know. I just like, it's kind of a slog. Maybe it's just not been the right season. And I will say that I do bring these socks with me when I'm working. So every like couple hours, I'll do 20 minutes of knitting. And that is how I've made quite a bit of progress recently on the sock. But it's just not really what's grasped my heart at the moment. Um, I do think that this texture is very cool. These are the woven check socks. And I'm using woolly mammoth fiber. I think the blue is a hearth sock and then the brown is a natural sock. Here's what the blue looks like. And here's what the brown looks like. Ooh, it's got one of my hairs on it. So I'm working on the toe of the first one. It's a little scrunched up weird. That's just the stitch pattern. Um, and the other one I've actually knit up past the heel turn. So I will just get knitting on the second one once I finish the toe of this first one, which will probably be at some point over the next couple of days. I'm looking forward to getting these done. I probably won't wear them in the heat. It's so hot here right now but they'll be great for when it gets a bit colder or pretty much just when it gets a bit colder. I'm quite behind on the Stephen West year of socks, but that's okay. I don't, I don't want that to be something that's stressing me out. So I've just decided I will knit them as fast as I want to. I'll get through them eventually and try and enjoy the process a little bit more. I did, I was enjoying them until this pair, I think, at least, if I can remember. My next work in progress is also one that you have seen before, and this one hasn't actually gotten that much work for me, although it, I have worked on it. There's a, a siren going by. I have worked on it more than it will look like because I just ripped some of it out the other day. Um, this is the Harlow Sweater by Kadri, um, and I am, well, let me just show you. This is what I've got so far. I just ripped out a big section that I had knit here um, because I was originally blending three different colors of spin cycle to make this, but I've just decided to just use two of them. Um, because the third one, which was like a much lighter color, just felt like kind of blocky. And I don't really want to have like a big light stripe across the widest part of my chest. Um, or really, I just, it didn't go. It didn't blend with the other two colors, which I think are looking really nice together. Um, so I will use the skeins that I bought for that in another project. Um, here, there's a little bit of it. You can see the light color, which is the I chord, is the Kaluna, the lightest color. So, um, here it is. 
is so far. I really love this pattern um, and I love the yarn that I'm using. Uh, I've decided to knit basically the whole body flat um, because since I'm using Spin Cycle, the colors change and they change at pretty, like a pretty regular yardage. And I really like the, the depth of the stripes that are happening um, at this number of stitches. Um, and if I doubled the number of stitches in a row by making it in the round, it would have the depth of the stripes. So I'm just gonna knit it flat. And that also makes it easier because I won't try and make the back and the front match. So I can really focus on getting the front to look exactly how I want, and then I'll knit the back and it will be a little bit less important. Um, and so it's a little bit of a cop out. So I will tell you the colors of the spin cycle that I'm using. I'm using rosy maple, which is quite a varied color way. Here's one skein of it, but then some of them are really orange and red, like I've just been knitting through here. Um, I think I wound up both of those into a ball. Oh. No, I didn't, I've got another one here. So here's sort of the variety of the same color. Those are both rosy maple. I really love the ones with the orange, but I also like the purple, so can't go wrong with the rosy maple. Um, my other colorway, I don't remember what it's called, and I have wound all of the skeins of it that I have up into balls, but um, I think I've mentioned it in a previous podcast, but it's a much darker, sort of less tonally varied color. Um, I've used it at the top here, like down to here. So this is all of the original color. It's got a little bit of turquoisey blue in it, as you can see here. Um, I was really trying to color manage the spin cycle to make it all blend well, but after I took out the really light color, that sort of has become less important um, since the two others blend quite well together. So. Can you hear that? Very loud. Um, so yeah, it's going well. I'm really enjoying knitting it. It's beautiful yarn to feel in your hands. I'm holding it with this hobby lace weight alpaca to help blend the colors together and give it a bit of halo. And I'm enjoying knitting with this too. Um, it was very inexpensive and I like it. And yeah, so I, I have worked on this a little bit, but I've ripped out most of what I've worked on. And here's a little stitch marker. I think that that stitch marker is to, to show where I should measure it from. But if I don't remember, maybe I should just take it out, I guess. Because I put that in a really long time ago. So that's my Harlow sweater. Um, another pattern has kind of taken my heart. And I haven't, when I took a trip to the States for some medical appointments, and I didn't bring this because it's sort of a big bag of yarn, um, I just brought this pattern. And then since I finished this, which took quite a long time, my heart has been stolen by another sweater, which I will show you next. So I've only been working on this one a little bit in the meantime, but, um, but I still love it. So it's all good news. Okay, now I'll grab my last whip to show you. Okay, here's my final whip that I'm going to show you. It's amazing. I love it. Um, it's, it's made out of Nugeden and it's technically, I guess, the Semper sweater by the Knit Pearl Girl but I will get into some more of the details about that. Um, basically, I've been seeing on Instagram for I think a couple months now, this sweater called the Spot Sweater by Anna Wetzel, who also designed that like badger, wolf and badger hide sweater, you know? I, you'll either know what I'm talking about or you won't. It's, um, 
quite a simple, mostly one by one color work using a little bit of like occasionally it like shifts. Um, but she only designs for like three sizes. And if you go to this designer's Ravelry page on Instagram, she's talking like bigging herself up as a designer being like, oh, I've been designing commercially for over 20 years. And now I've been designing knitwear for this many years. It's like, wait, you still can't design past a 41 inch bust. So I'm not impressed, <laughs> not to be too harsh, but like, come on. I, I just think that it's kind of ridiculous. And people have reached out to her in the past about making her pattern size inclusive and she's basically just said, no, not gonna do it. Um, so obviously I didn't wanna knit one of her designs because I don't think that that's very nice. I don't know, like, I know that this isn't the most important thing in the world. And if I bought her pattern, it would probably, I don't know, it wouldn't like make a difference, but there are so many really great people who write patterns. So I just would be much happier supporting someone who I really like and I think is trying to do good things rather than somebody who's just like, can't be bothered writing patterns for people who have larger bodies. Um, so I really, uh, but I like this pattern, right? The spot sweater. Um, it's got like triangles and people do some color shifty stuff and it's sort of like a scrap busting, shifty, cool thing. So I went on, I Googled like knitting color chart, color work chart maker, and I made up a little chart which has similar vibes to the chart of that pattern. Um, I wanted to have like not triangles because that would be too close so i was like squares i'll do squares and then every it's like a checkered pattern but then every other dark checker is sort of like a, a dark one light one dark one light one dark one light one dark one light one dark one so anyway i should maybe just show you um so here it is so i didn't want to swatch and I just, I've been eyeing up the Semper sweater by the Knit Pearl Girl for a while. It just looks like a really beautiful compound raglan um, where you, the compound raglan means that the in, rate of increase changes throughout the yoke um, and it's not always equal on the sleeve and on the body. And um, I've made one of those, my timepiece cardigan was a compound raglan that's designed by Albiona, and I really love the way that that fits. Oh, I added buttons to that. I should have brought that to show. Maybe I'll show next time, because it fits quite differently with the buttons. Um, but I, I've just been circling the Semper sweater for a while, um, and I thought, this is perfect. I will knit that. And so I cast on fewer stitches than I thought I would want, um, knowing also that my gauge is going to be much bigger than, than the pattern because the pattern suggests a strand of lace weight and a strand of fingering. But it's at a 19 stitch gauge, which um, I would need to knit with smaller than four millimeter needles to get a 19 stitch gauge, personally. Um, I'm knitting with 4.5 here, and I have like a 17 stitch gauge, possibly 16. Um, so I knew that I'd have to do a little bit of playing with the rag, like just the end of the raglan, because my gauge is big. Um, and oh, I'm getting quite warm. It's really warm in my apartment. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so I cast on using the numbers, her numbers to start out with. I followed her short rows, um, which you can see at the back here. It was kind of tricky to incorporate my chart onto it, but not too bad, nothing I couldn't handle. Um, and then as after the short rows, the raglan was ready to go. Oh, I didn't do the, the knit simultaneous neck band. I just cast on I don't remember, maybe a long tail cast on? And then I picked up, because I knew I wanted to do a rolled neck, but I wasn't exactly sure how the yarn was going to behave. 
or what colors I was going to use, so I didn't know what color to knit the neckband. So I left that until after, but now I've done it. Um, and I wasn't sure I wanted to do a rule neckband, but I decided, and I'm very happy with it now. Um, and I, yeah, I'm using two strands of Neutrogen. I haven't bought Neutrogen since September of this year, last year. I really, I got really sucked in to the marketing and the hype and the colors are so beautiful and I liked the podcast. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I have so much of it now. Um, and the colors are beautiful every time, you know, like, and also, I was paying $10 a month to have the privilege of being allowed to buy the yarn. And so I bought something from every update because I was paying, the updates are like, well, they were like four times a year. So if you're paying like $30 roughly for every update, it just seems like a huge shame to not buy something from each update, if you know what I mean. Um, anyway, so I kind of felt like I was being suckered into making these purchasing decisions that I may not have otherwise made. I unsubscribed from the Patreon and I... Did I say I was a Patreon member? It always bugs me when people say Patreons because the word is patrons. That's where Patreon comes from. <laughs> it's like a stupid pet peeve, but it is a pet peeve. It bothers me that I do it too. The last collection I purchased from, I bought a lot from it, and it was the one with Vera Vaughn and Botaniska. And I also bought the light, like the really light gray slash white Flissolin, maybe? And then I also bought the really dark gray, which you can see here, and I don't remember what that's called. But anyway, I just had so much of this stuff. Like I have so much nudid in, and the colors are gorgeous, but it's more yarn than like, the rate that I was buying it, I couldn't get through it if that was the only thing I was knitting. So I had to cut the cord. And I'm a now I'm a little bit like, part of me misses it. But also part of me is really glad I stopped when I did. Because I'm still knitting through it. Um, and I enjoy elements of unspun yarn. But I like spun yarn more. And... The unspun garments that I've made do have a quite a specific texture and I'm just not sure how many of those I need and how many additional ones I need and how many more than the yarn that I already own that I need. I have two right now. I did have three but one of them I destroyed uh, by washing it, which is a sad story. I just, I'm needed and I don't know if you can see it. It lives up in my bookcase. It's so beautiful um, to look at. The colors are gorgeous. And it's, I just, this sweater is just kind of a love letter to these wonderful colors that I look at every day, even though I feel, I have complicated feelings about the marketing tactics behind it. The colors are just gorgeous. Um, and I wanted to knit with them. And I had just finished this, which is so, this is just the absolute opposite yarn from this. Um, I don't know how to describe it otherwise, but um, they're both kind of hard on your hands actually to knit with because this has no give and this has only give. Um, I was sort of thinking originally of giving this to my dad. He, Bill, is a real, he's the most knitworthy person, maybe other than my boyfriend who is very knitworthy too but I don't want to make my boyfriend a jumper because of the curse. Um, the only problem with my dad is that he leaves stuff on the train, a lot. But he'll wear stuff until he leaves it on the train. Um, but I was thinking if I gave this to him, I would like sew in a little tag with his phone number that says, if lost, please call. Um, because I really wouldn't want this to go missing. But now I'm thinking I might not want to give this up because I really like it. Um, I think we'll just see. And it would also be okay if I made it in a size that would fit both of us. We're very similar sized sizes. I would just, I've already made the yoke a little bit deeper and I would just need to make it longer and maybe the sleeves a little bit longer and it would fit both of us. But if I want to keep it for a season, like for this winter and then give it to him next winter, that would also be very nice. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, so, I've been holding two strands together 
I'm knitting on a 4.5 millimeter. I'm not thinking too hard about it. Um, and I've just been blending colors and enjoying and following the pattern. And since my gauge is much bigger than the pattern gauge, I kind of went off piste when I felt like the raglan was long enough um, and the sleeves were big enough. So it's been a really casual, fun, just so enjoyable. I come home and I work on this and I'm happy as clam. Um, for color transitions, my only rule, ooh, I see a moth. I've gotta go get it. It's not a moth, it's actually a very large spider. Um, I don't mind spiders. They're my allies against the moths. Which I'll talk about moths later in this episode. I've been talking about this jumper for a long time and I think that I am quite out of practice of recording videos. But my, oh, I was telling you about my rule. My only rule is that I'm not doing any rainbow color transitions. And so there's two colors. I'll maybe flash the chart I made up on the screen. Uh, fairly simple, kind of makes me think of race cars. I don't know why. Probably because it looks like something to do with a race car. And I'm just using muted in colors that I already have um, and blending them together. I had a lot of odds and ends. I love to buy the Lucky Charms and they give you um, some extras in the bag sometimes. And I think that it looks quite cohesive. Also, Veravon is like my secret weapon because that has a bunch of colors in it. Although the plates that I got are mostly like the parts where the red and the green intersected. So it just looks like a kind of poopy brown. I'm trying to figure out what I can, what color I can use contrasting that so it will look good, but I don't know yet. Um, and so I'm avoiding rainbow color transition. So I wouldn't want to go like orange to yellow or yellow to green or orange to red. Um, and to blend, I just hold, I, instead of two of the same color, I'll switch one of the colors for three rows. And then I'll switch to both of the colors. And even in quite severe color transitions, like this orange to really light pink that I've just done, that seems to work really well to blend them. I kind of like how it goes from low contrast to high contrast. This like really bright yellow is not muted in and it's kind of funny how much it stands out. Um, but it, yeah, it just isn't really the right weight either. So I think I'll just save that and use it for another project. Other than that yellow, everything is muted in, in this. And I just split for the sleeves. So most of these colors in the top half are from the last update. And some of the colors from that update were in the Lucky Charms bag from the previous update. But I think that gives it kind of a cohesive look. I might only think that because I've been looking at all of these colors together on my bookshelf for the past six months, but I don't know. I don't mind being the only one who thinks that. Um, if you're wondering, the next color that I'm going to take this purple into is this one. I don't know what it's called. It was a lucky charm. And this light color is currently this really interesting light blue. I just started that one row ago. And I, let me just get the yarn. I think I'm gonna do this as a, just fade through these three colors. Um, it's not a rainbow transition because they're all the same color, blue. But I'm, I don't know, I'm just enjoying this. I might put it on the back burner now that the raglan part is over and finish that sock for tonight, or I might not. Um, I haven't told my dad I'm thinking of giving it to him yet because then I will have to give it to him. And since I got onto this purple part, I just really like it. What can I say? 
So it fits me really well, which means it will fit my dad because we are the same size. Um, and I'm enjoying it. It makes me want to buy more Neutrogen. I can't believe I'm saying that, but it does. Uh, if they came out with another color like Veravon, where it's like quite color shifty, I'll go grab a plate of Veravon so that you can see. So if they came out with another color like this, I would buy it because I really love the way that the colors change, even though most of, I mean like a lot of people had like bright yellows and bright reds and I got a lot of this, but it is really pretty. So I imagine if it was like, imagine if they did like, I don't know, any, any other ones, that would be so cool. I don't know why they aren't doing that. That's jackpot idea status. So my jumper, it's wonderful. I have to say, the Semper pattern, I am not enjoying working from. It's like verbose to a point of comedy. Um, the word whilst is used so many times. Why does, why? It just like, it's so wordy that it's almost more difficult to understand. I think if you've never knit anything before, and you read this pattern, you would come out with a pretty thorough understanding of all of the terms that you needed to know. So that's great. So if you're a person who's never knit anything, or who has only knit one or two things, and you want a pattern that describes what knitting in the round is, then this will be really useful for you. And it did come with a yarn choice guide, which I think would also be useful to a beginner, but I don't know if I would recommend the pattern to anyone else just because it's it's like hard to follow. I've met a lot of raglans and I struggled to follow like the raglan shaping and the short row instructions and that was very surprising to me. I was doing it at the same time as color work but the color work was not what was giving me the issues. It was just like parsing through all of the paragraphs of text. The pattern is 26 pages long and I think it could be eight um, saying that, it's gorgeous. I really like the way that it looks. I just wish that it was written in a more concise way. Um, and I don't know if I would uh, purchase more patterns by the Knit Pearl Girl, Pearl Girl for that reason. Um, although she has some really beautiful designs, so I might have to like Put my reading glasses on. I'm, I'm studying English. I'm doing a master's degree in English and I found this pattern to be too wordy. <laughs> so make your own decision about that. But that's my warning. I, I was kind of shocked when I was reading the pattern. Um, I did a dramatic reading of it over a beer with some friends at the pub recently. To, to people laughed. That's all of my works in progress. I have quite a lot of other stuff to talk to you about too, so I will get into it right now. The first thing is a terrible news, and it is that I think I developed an allergy to spinning oil, um, or like I ha I've been having these reactions to the spinning oil, and it started in this beautiful jumper that I made recently, that I finished in my last episode, I will insert a picture of it because I can't touch it right now. It just makes me break out in hives, like full body hives, when I wear it. It started happening like a week or two into wearing it. I didn't really have any issues with allergic reactions when I was knitting it. It's the Lakes Pullover by Ozetta. Beautiful saddle shoulder, the yarn, gorgeous, marled, really rustic. But I can't wear it because it makes me break out in hives. Um, the reason that I think it's a spinning oil allergy is because I was knitting swatches for, um, after the original reaction had calmed down, and I was like, okay, I'll just wash it really thoroughly again, and maybe get all the spinning oil out, and maybe then I can wear it. Um, it didn't help. But I'm gonna just keep trying, I guess. Eventually I will give it to someone, but I really don't want to because I love the pattern. I love the jumper that I made. 
Um, and the wool is really special to me. It was a gift from my dad. So I would really like to be able to wear it. And it's also really warm and it came out beautifully. Um, so I'll try again because I think these sort of things for me sometimes come and go. But I was knitting swatches, which I guess is another thing I wanted to talk to you about. I don't know if you'll remember, but a couple of months ago, maybe almost a year ago when I was knitting my Roosty tank, it's a Fair Isle pattern, I knit the ribbing wrong, like I knit, I, I had made this really intricate swatch, but I hadn't, I didn't measure it, which is so stupid. My gauge was quite off, much looser than the gauge in the pattern, so I ended up needing to size down, I think, two sizes. But I had already knit the ribbing and it was going to be really large and it was such a nightmare to knit. I just kept it and I was like, I'll knit something, I'll knit a sort of positive ease jumper and use this ribbing. Um, I can't unravel it. So ever since then, I've been sort of playing with like, I want to do stripes and it's knit with Shetland wool fingering weight. So I have quite a decent amount of that sort of wool. So I was sort of playing around with different stripe patterns, mostly inspired by the Cordy. Is it Cordy or Ginsan? It's not Cordy. I think it's the Ginsan pattern from Moon and Turtle. Um, so here's one swatch I made, just using yarn that I had. And then here's another swatch I made, which I have to be careful not to touch too much, um, because this red background color is whole super soft and when i was knitting it i had the same allergic reaction that i had to my jumper that i made and i didn't have the allergic reaction to the first swatch that i knit and the only new yarn that i introduced was the whole super soft which is known for having a lot of spinning oil so that's why i think that i'm having some sort of reaction to the spinning oil i'll continue investigating this I think that wearing sunscreen every day has made me much more sensitive to everything else, just sort of like an overload of irritants. I've heard that being a thing, um, but yeah, I'm upset. I have a lot of whole super soft and more importantly, the garment that I made, um, I can't wear. I mean, I wouldn't be able to wear it right now anyway because it's really hot, but I would like the option. So I made those two swatches, um, but I still don't think I found what I want for that ribbon. The other thing that I wanted to update you on are, is my moth saga. So I brought over, this is more muted in information, when I moved back to Edinburgh I brought a big Ziploc vacuum seal bag with all of my nudid in it. and. It just had moths in it, like there's no easy way to say it. And so a couple weeks after, I went to open the bag and I saw that it was full of moths, so I didn't open it. And there it sat for ages. And I didn't know what to do. But my beautiful new jumper led me to realize that I, I was thinking of just getting rid of the whole bag, to be honest. I hate moths, I already have them. I don't want to release a Ziploc bag of moths into my apartment, even for beautiful yarn. Like, something's gotta give. But I, <laughs> I needed more purple, and I knew that I had more purple in the Ziploc bag. Um, so I Googled, and I found out that I could uh, put the yarn in the oven. Um, so I have been slowly, because only like three plates fit in my oven at a time, Plus, it's really hot here, so I don't want to be running my oven all the time. Um, so I've been cooking my Nudidin at 55 degrees Celsius for 45 minutes, and then carefully removing the outer layer that has moth crap on it, like eggs and that liquid stuff, which is all dried. And, um... Yeah, throwing that away, balling up the rest, and I've been slowly working through that bag. It's pretty disgusting and disturbing, and I hate it, but it's really good to know that that is an option. I don't have a freezer, so I can't freeze the moths. 
which is I think what some people have recommended that I do. Um, but that's not really an option for me because I don't have a freezer. I don't have any freezer, let alone freezer space for a bunch of yarn. So the oven has been working pretty well for me, I think. Um, I have been rescuing the yarn out of it, and it has been helping to tamp down some of my desire to buy more Nudidin, which I really need to tamp down. I cannot go into that desire. Um, so that is the final like yarn-related update. Um, I'll quickly talk you through some of the things that I've bought over the past two, three months since I last recorded a video. Obviously, the linen from this top, plus the brown color that I already showed you, those were purchased since I last recorded. Um, I also made a really big purchase from Woolly Mammoth Fiber Co. where I got all of my sock yarn. Uh, she released some amazing spring colors. I think I've kind of lost the light, but I will show you. Um, but part of the reason that I worry about losing the light is because this green color really changes depending on the time of day. Sometimes it looks yellow, and sometimes it looks like a chartreuse green, um, which I love. They're all in her natural sock base, and they're all fingering like. And then I bought that a little bit. Bananas. Then I bought these. Oh god, I'm dropping everything. These two sort of coral. This bubblegum pink, and then this really light pink. So all together, they look like this. And I love them. I want to make a jumper. I don't know if I will this year, but I want to do that. And I want it to be striped or marled. Um, I haven't decided. All good options. On one hand, I could hold it double. I mean, I could hold it double for either, but I'm very intrigued by the marled green and um, like salmon-y idea. I think that would be really cool. Um, which is funny because I was complaining about the red-green combination in the Nudidin, but I think it would look cool marled. Um, and I also got this skein of sock yarn from John Arvin. I just think it's really pretty, and I've used this sock yarn before, and I really like it. And I think it will go with a lot of other sock yarn that I already have. Um, I've got everything piled on this chair. The last thing I bought, um, it looks a bit of a mess, but I bought some of the Le Petit Lens Wool from Biche Bouche. I have used this yarn before, I really enjoyed using it. And I love, this is like the color combination of the season for me. The pink and red together, gorgeous, love it. So I um, went to Loop in Philadelphia and I was having kind of bad day. It was the day after all of my medical appointments and I just wanted to buy some yarn, so I bought those. And I'm pretty excited to have them. Um, yeah. I'm pretty excited to have all of the yarn that I've acquired recently. Um, so, so that's all I've got to tell you about. I hope that you've enjoyed. I live in a very loud apartment. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that it hasn't been too scatterbrained and low energy for you. And I will see you again soon with an update on all of these projects that I am loving so much at the moment. I hope you're all well, and I, yeah, have a good couple weeks. Goodbye.